This is NLPS Ed Talks, a podcast brought to you by Nanaimo Ladysmith Public Schools. I'm Dale Burgos, the Executive Director of Communications, and I'll be sharing conversations with students, staff, and friends of the district. We'll learn, we'll laugh, we may cry, but most importantly, we'll share the unique stories of individuals that work and play in our school system. Nanaimo Ladysmith Public Schools is one of many school districts in British Columbia, Canada, and is centrally located in one of the most beautiful places in the world, Vancouver Island. Thanks for joining us. We've got uh, somebody pretty cool in here. He's got uh, probably one of the coolest jobs that I've seen in the district. I see him walking by my office window all the time uh, with kids in his class. Uh, this is Franjo. Welcome, Franjo. Thank you very much. How do you uh, pronounce your last name? <laughs> Just like it looks. Cernkovic. Cernkovic. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah. What kind of name is Cernkovic? It's a proud Croatian last name. Proud Croatian last name. I love that. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about Croatia here, but let's let's talk a little bit about just uh, where you came from. All right. So born, born and raised. Where are you from? Born, raised here in beautiful uh, Nanaimo. Oh, nice. Um, I count myself super lucky to be uh, extremely proud Canadian and uh, Croatian. Um, I hold two passports, uh, both Canadian and Croatian. I believe those countries are probably the best great countries in the world and I'm super lucky and, and fortunate but yeah born and raised here in Nanaimo uh, went to Harewood Elementary School wow um, look at that graduated NDSS yep and uh, yeah so born and raised so and dual citizenship so mm-hmm. you mentioned that you have uh, you've got a Croatian passport mm-hmm. uh, who's Croatian in your family my father father okay and uh, my grandparents okay as well yeah. and your mom's from Winnipeg Winnipeg, hey, yeah. shout out to Winnipeg, Good that's where Winnipeg. I'm from. We love it. <laughs> Good, awesome. So do you get to visit Croatia and Winnipeg often? Let's start mm-hmm. with uh, Winnipeg, since it's yeah, closer. Winnipeg, yeah, Winnipeg, um, unfortunately I didn't go there very often when I was a kid. Yep. I've only been there once, uh, okay. which was two years ago on a school trip. All right. And I'm actually going there again on Friday. So a lot of stories about Winnipeg. Like I said, my, um, my grandparents um, immigrated um, to Winnipeg from... Croatia, my grandfather, and uh, Germany, my grandmother. Okay. And uh, my mom was born and raised in Winnipeg, and um, fortunately met my my father when he immigrated as a young man from Croatia to Winnipeg. And yeah, um, yeah they made the move out here in seventy nine when 79. I was born. What what brought him out to Nanaimo, or to the island? Uh, you know what? I've never really heard that uh, answer, but I know <laughs> I know my father really loved the climate out here. Oh yeah. And it compared a lot to back home, and I think work opportunities, and uh, yeah, just to get away maybe a little bit from the cold and uh, <laughs> see a little bit of water and trees. Uh, yeah, right. Winnipeg does, ha- does have that reputation for being very cold. Yeah. I was there last winter, mm-hmm. uh, almost a year ago, and it hit minus 50 wow. overnight wow. that one time. And I thought, wow, this is <laughs> this is cold. I'm glad I'm going back to yeah. Nanaimo after it's nice, this. Nice to, what did I say? Nice to visit, but nice to leave too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. So, I mean, love it there. It's, it's where I grew up. It's where yeah. I'm from. But um, definitely... Uh, your parents had it right. They moved over to the island where it's where it's much much nicer. Exactly. Uh, now Croatia, you mentioned, mm-hmm. climate's very similar to here. It is very similar, especially the area where my where my father grew up. Okay. Um, what area is that? It's a uh, province of Lika. Lika. Uh, the the town is called Brinje. Okay. And it's spelled B R I N J E. And okay. uh, his climate very similar. A lot of beautiful forest trees where we're a quick drive down the Adriatic coast. Um, nice. You know, a lot of climate change. You know, the winters aren't as, as harsh as they used to be when I was younger. Oh. So it's warming up. Um, but, yeah, beautiful summers, beautiful people. And, um, yeah, just really lucky. Uh, no kidding. And yeah. you've mentioned uh, in, in passing, and, and we've talked in the past, uh, mm-hmm. about how you, you go there quite frequently. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned that as well here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's how awesome is that? So you have people there that uh, that still live in in Croatia? Yeah, we have a lot of we have a close knit community in our in our town. Um, I was fortunate enough to to be able to go back to Croatia, or uh, starting to go to Croatia in 1991 uh, okay. when Croatia got independence oh. uh, from the former Yugoslavia. And at that time, a lot of Croatians that were outside of Croatia, Australia, Canada, America, started going back, and my family was fortunate enough that we were able to i spent a lot of summers there after high school um during university mm-hmm. and uh and today um i'm lucky to bring my own family there my kids my wife have been there and um we do spend a lot of time as a younger child um i, I went back to help my grandmother out with a lot of things nice. um uh, i had to as a citizen i had to um 
report to the army and do my compulsory uh, army service there. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. In two thousand one, and um, okay, yeah. And how long did that last for? Uh, that was six months. Okay. And um, so that's the minimum you have to do, or is that, that how does that work? I was the first class that went down to six months. Okay. Um, prior to me, um, it was ten, and yep. then. Um, before that, traditionally the army and there's still countries out there that still do it. You know, they, it was normally two years was your army oh, service. Wow. Okay, yeah. so as a Croatian citizen, of course, you, like you said, you mm -hmm. have dual citizenship. Yeah, that's something that is that's mandatory essentially. Yeah, no longer. I think okay. they got rid of the um, the army uh, compulsory duty probably eight years ago now. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was every you finish school, you finish the uh, gymnasium, which is kind of um, the equivalent of the. The high school that we have here yep. and uh you went to the army of, as a male and then yep. you're kind of your life would start after after the military wow yeah. okay so what was that experience like it was really good yeah. um traveled a lot yeah it was it was it was an eye-opener coming okay. from a again like i said proud canadian live in this amazing country that you know we we have everything here and mm -hmm. to go to croatia and spend that time um, after, in a country that just finished the war recently, right. um, it was different. It was it was interesting to meet a lot of people from different avenues and um, lifestyles, yeah. and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot what um, what my family went through to to have Croatia, whether it was back in the '40s with my grandfather's, um, what my what my uh, my father went through when he was in the army during Yugoslavia and the com communist communist regime. Oh, yeah. So it was it was good, and it was a small thing that I could do um, to say thank you. It was a small thing I could do to prepare my family and my future family to be able to go back and nice. and we're you know after '91 we could finally verbally proudly say we're Croatian whereas gotcha. before that it was hard you know my mother grew up in Winnipeg and you know Croatian background and it was I hear I've heard stories it was it was hard time and it was a hard time for Croatian people and it was a hard time um, just being able to say who you were you, gotcha. you know you weren't allowed you weren't allowed to say this you weren't allowed to believe in in other things and after 91 it was just a really good celebration and obviously the country needs a lot of work and we have our political issues currently going on but um everyone's got political exactly. issues yep. exactly. yeah exactly yeah exactly I, I grew up with a lot of uh, croatians mm -hmm. uh, very proud people uh when you know going to high school with them and they love their they love soccer or yeah, football exactly. right they love their sports yeah. um so up until that time that you went into the military mm -hmm. you spent a lot of your time obviously here mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like you did a lot of sports mm -hmm. right yeah tons i um uh, super active child i um I played soccer as a young young boy. Mm -hmm, um, of course. <laughs> started, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Started playing basketball a lot here at NDSS. Um, rowing was a big thing for me too in, in high school. Okay. Um, and then yeah, post secondary, I, I was fortunate to play basketball here at Fort Mile Spina for a year, and nice. then I went to the military. And after the military, I moved to Red Deer College in, in Alberta. Oh. oh, okay. And I uh, continued my education out there and played basketball there. And then um, took on boxing, <laughs> took on uh, European handball in Alberta, and uh, yeah, Jeez. just just everything, just as much as I could, and um, it was great. Unreal. Yeah. Uh, obviously, sports is a big thing for mm -hmm. you. I mean, you love your sports. Uh, growing up, is this something that you wanted to do, or was it your parents saying, "We got to keep you busy. You got a lot of energy, kid. You yeah. got to you got to do this." It was uh, my parents supported me in whatever I wanted. Um, I was busy. I had to. Uh, I had to do my work and I could still play. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, it, it oh, that's good. Yeah, classic yeah. stories. You know, friends would call me on the weekend, hey, what are you doing? Normally the answer was, Franya was cutting grass or chopping wood. <laughs> but it was uh, yeah. it was good. I had a great childhood. My parents were happy for whatever whatever I was happy doing. Nice. And they were just uh, very supportive in every avenue, whether it was my schooling, traveling, sports, everything. They were really good. 
How awesome is that? They yeah. sound like great parents. Yeah. Uh, siblings? Do you have any? I do. Okay. I'm very lucky to have a younger sister. Okay. <clears throat> She's uh, 13 years younger than I am. Oh, okay. And her name's Vesna. Uh, she graduated as well at NDSS, and she currently lives in Calgary with my beautiful niece and my father-in-law. Oh, or my brother-in-law. Sorry. Your brother-in-law. There yeah. you go. That's how awesome is that? Yeah. Um, I love the names, right? Mm. You said Vesna? Vesna, yeah. Vesna, and then Franjo, of course. Yeah. So these are are these typical Croatian names? Are yeah, they're, they are more... Um, they're a little bit older Croatian names. Oh, okay. I'm named after both my grandfathers. Okay. Uh, my my father's dad was Franjo, and then uh, ah. my um, my mother's father was Marian, and that's my middle name. Okay. And then, um, yeah, so they're just traditional older Croatian names, and uh, that's, yeah, that's yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have a family. I do. Yeah, yeah. so your wife's name is? Michelle. Oh, say hi. Hi, yeah, Michelle. Hi, How Michelle. you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and you got some kids. I do. Yeah, I have uh, two children. Yeah. The oldest is Livia, and she's currently in kindergarten at Hammond Bay Elementary. Awesome. And I have a little uh, a two-year-old daughter named Eva, and she's busy as anyone could be. <laughs> <laughs> now, she, uh, Hammond Bay, of course, French immersion. Yeah. Do you speak French? I do. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so how many languages? I mean, I'm assuming you, you know Croatian. Yeah, I speak yeah. three fluently. Three fluently. Yeah, so is the is the Croatian language just is it safe to say Croatian or is there a, a, a name for it? Croatian. Croatian. Yeah, there you go. Exactly, All right. Yeah. That's nice to have. Mm. I mean, growing up, I hear. I mean, the more languages you know, mm. right? Uh, it's easier to learn more, Big right? Time, yeah. um, I uh, I'm Filipino, as mm. I was telling you before we started recording here, and um, so I understand uh, the main dialect of the Philippines uh, for me to speak it. A little bit difficult, but yeah. my parents never put that on me. Right. Um, but it, I'm finding that, so for example, Tagalog is mine. Yeah. And Spanish, it's, there's a lot of Spanish in it. Yeah. So then I can use a lot of that. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know what Croatia's, Croatian's like. Is there, is there a dialect that it's similar to? Yeah, we, it's a Slavic language. Okay. I always try to explain it as it's not as harsh as Russian. Okay. But not as soft as Italian. Italian not being a Slavic language, but it, it's a smooth kind of... Slavic language. It's um, as you can tell. I don't have many vowels in my last name, and right, yeah. <laughs> we spell things just the way they look, and we yeah. say them the same way. And yeah. um, but it's um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful language as well. Okay, well let, let's hear something in Croatian. So, so let's hear just hey everybody, how you doing or something like that. Sure. Dan, svima, kako ide? Okay, there you go. Now Dobrodan, I've heard that before. That's mm -hmm. that's uh, in different languages too, no? Yeah, you could, you'll hear it probably Polish, Ukrainian, that's Russian. Right. That's you'll right. Probably hear, yeah, they'll probably have a little bit of a different dialect. I'm not too sure what, but okay. you'll hear that for sure. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. No worries. Uh, okay, uh, you mentioned so you did the European handball a little bit later, boxing a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, European handball. That's that's with a smaller ball. Am I thinking? Yeah, it's probably right. the size of a cantaloupe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And it's basically, I would say it's like uh, water polo, but no pool. <laughs> yeah, it's well, there a, you go. For the people who don't swim. Yeah, for sure. Then that works out perfectly. It is, yeah. And it's a great sport. It's a very physical sport. Yeah, I've seen it, yes. And um, yeah, I, I, I started playing that when I was 26 okay. in Alberta. And, All right. Uh, the Alberta system there for ha European handball is very large. Um Oh. Handball is a provincial sport, like our basketball and volley would be okay. in the high school programs. Right, lacrosse maybe. Right. Uh, could be, yeah, possibly. it could be. I just don't, like there's here? like there's like the club sports, and then gotcha. there's the um, okay, whatever the other word is. But so it's very very big. Okay. Um, and then yeah, I, I made the uh, the Alberta provincial team as Jeez. a rookie as a 26 year old. I was with all these younger guys, and <laughs> and we won nationals against uh, Quebec and. Uh, I'm going to say 2007. Okay, congrats. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now, other sporting achievements. Like, what, what are the big achievements in your life? Is, is it all to do with sports or, you know? Yeah, like what? I, think, sure. I think achievements just, like my parents will always say, we're the richest people if we have our health, <laughs> you know, and, and health has been something that has been really good. But when it comes to achievements, um, whether it's sports, academics, you know, life goals. I'm a big goal setter, yeah. and um, I still have a lot of goals I want to reach, but I've accomplished a lot. And I think when it comes to sports, whether an athlete or coaching, you know, most recently, basketball-wise, um, getting NDSS back to the Provincials last year, and right. Glenn Johnson and I coached together, and that was a that was a huge feat for us. So you coach 
what or uh, an ND first off? Senior girls basketball. Senior girls basketball. And mm-hmm. you've been doing that for how long? This is my second year at ND doing senior girls basketball. Okay. Yeah. And pretty big accomplishment. Yeah. I mean, so you said that you had got, say that again? So last year we, last we year. qualified for provincials. We yep. finished first on the island. Nice. Um, it was the first time 23 years or 26 years that a team other than a Victoria team won the islands for girls. Wow. Okay. Last time it was NDSS that did that. Okay. So it was pretty cool. And, and coaching with Glenn was a, was amazing. He had a, a daughter on that team and okay. a really cool core girls that were just a, a pleasure to coach. So that was an achievement that was, I'm super proud of and should be try to, you know, incorporate that to this year. And we have our Island championships, um, this coming weekend and hopefully we can do that again. Yeah. Um, academic goals you know I, I got my master's degree at Gonzaga University and mm-hmm. that was a big one for me and really proud of that congrats and I was thank you and I was super happy to do that with my wife and uh, so we both have that and um, so your wife's a teacher as well she is yeah she okay. teaches uh, visual arts and um, and dance and at, at least my secondary school oh, okay yeah. now is that where you like did you two meet when you were going to school to be no. teachers or how does that how did that we actually work? met we're going back sp- a little bit here yeah we met through sports oh, okay um, she'll laugh at this but <laughs> my uh, sister was in grade 12 she was playing in the vancouver island all-star game in victoria for basketball nice my wife who uh the well sorry my wife now but michelle <laughs> Uh, she was helping coach Wellington senior girls that year. Oh, okay. And she was at that game, and yeah. we met. And That's it. Everything slowed down. You <laughs> saw each other <laughs> across was, the court. Yeah, they called a timeout for the game. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. totally how it is. Or that's at least how you can tell us how it went. For right? sure. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I love it. That's great. I love stories like that, too. Yeah. And, and so uh, is she local? Is no, she from here? born and raised in Port Alberni. Port Alberni. Okay. Mm. Well, not far. Right, not far so at all, yeah. not local, but but not far. Okay, exactly. cool. Yeah. Um, so let's get a little bit into the teaching. And I mentioned how I see you in your class walking mm-hmm. by my my office window once in a while, and I love this because um, we live in a in a beautiful place. I don't have to tell you that, but I'm I'm I mean I'm so happy that I live in a place like this. And quite literally, you're walking by with fishing rods in your yeah. hands, yeah. and you're walking down the street from NDSS mm-hmm. into Colliery Dam area, for mm-hmm. example, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's something that you, it looks like you do quite regularly with your class. And then you also, I see you putting up tents mm-hmm. um, in, in the field across the way over here in mm-hmm. front of ND. So mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about your plan and, and more specifically uh, this 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 class that you specifically teach. I mean, mm-hmm. it's different and, mm-hmm. and I love it. And I, and I think kids would really appreciate taking this. Yeah, no, it's <clears throat> it's been a journey. You know, the um, this class called... Uh, NDSS West Coast Wilderness Studies started um, six years ago now when I taught at Woodlands and um, just really focusing on you know getting the kids outdoors doing that land-based learning Mm -hmm. cross-curricular stuff and um, and having the the passion of the outdoors you know I we've talked about the sports and the cultural stuff but I'm a big I love being outside you know I, I grew up fishing grew up camping you know I'm not I'm not the I'm not super keen and bo- and um, hiking and stuff like that I'll do it but I just love whatever whatever gives me an excuse to get outside I'm, I'm really into it okay so the course kind of started actually um, as a fishing club uh, at Woodlands we offered a an, um, an X block so teachers offered some kind of passion that they had to the kids the kids signed up for them and then we did it every whatever fifth Friday or sixth Friday so I did a little fishing one and had a had a fairly large number after a few rotations, and then um, we created a course uh, called uh, I think it was just called Outdoor Education. Yeah. And um, anyways, we fast forward to now. The first course had 13 kids. Now I have uh, two classes of 30 kids in each. Mm-hmm. Um, and nice. we we do a lot of things. We the the big the big thing, and you talk to a lot of a lot of people in the community is. We need to teach these kids how to how to play again, and I, I believe I don't believe the technology is a, is hindering them. I just our society is different. People are busy, and you know it's kind of it's just t- different times. Mm-hmm. And these kids want to play outside, so the course focuses on a lot of life skills. You know, I teach the kids knot tying, how to start a fire, shelter making, cleaning fish, um, geocaching, uh, orienteering. 
animal plant fish identification like all those things that you know hopefully draw them to to start playing out you know and then we do a lot of um we get certificates so a lot of the kids get their first aid they get their belaying tickets their oh. boating course um if they are into hunting they can get their hunting license and their firearm safety course and stuff uh we do a lot of field trips you know daily in class field trips you know we go to colliery dam we do fishing uh, plant identification geocaching all that kind of stuff super fortunate to be able to just you know it's a quick 10 minute walk up yeah. to that classroom that we call colliery dam um we camp up in Mucha Bay, Nooka Sound area for five days. We're going ice fishing <clears throat> in Lillooette, February 26th. That's great. I love it. Yeah, and just a lot of just those experiences. <clears throat> um, I'm super excited to start seeing a lot of other schools yeah. branching off mm -hmm. and doing it as well. And um, Well, congrats. I mean, the, that course, <coughs> that, I mean, like you were talking about, how fun i mean i would have done that yeah. i mean that just it, it teaches you it teaches you a lot about the basics you talk about not tying uh you talk about just orient or, orienteering right yeah. and um so like i said sometimes i take a break i look out my window and here you are using tarps <laughs> yeah. and making makeshift tents or or shelters yeah. right for people just so if you don't have a tent per se mm -hmm. you can make a shelter and well, and so yeah. it's things like this that are I'll say survival techniques or basic techniques mm -hmm. that I think is fantastic. And so obviously you're a big champion of this and, and you're the big push for it as well. Yeah. Thank you. Cause I, I don't know if we do that course the same way if you weren't around, I, I'd like to say that we would, but mm -hmm. I mean, you obviously are a big push for that. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it's, um, I think as educators, we're passionate in, in all our areas and, you know, and I've been very fortunate to have a lot of community support. Mm. Yep. And just from prior connections, prior to teaching the course, you know, I just talk to friends or other local businesses. They, they just jump on board. Right. You know, Nanaimo is a great place. The island's a great place to that. They want to help these kids. So without that support, it would be really hard. We wouldn't be doing as much. Okay. We would be doing stuff. But, you know, eh, you know, I've got a family drives from couch and to teach first aid for, you know, six days and they're taking time off from being paramedics hmm. and you know um dispatch you've got people coming over from vancouver teaching courses and and this is all volunteer time you wow. know and they're, they're they're doing this so it's um yeah it's great it's great and i i you know i've had a goal for years to have it like district wide and it's nice that wellington's got a really great educator there and he's trying to spearhead mm -hmm. it dover bay does lady smith does and Good. uh it's awesome. That's great. Yeah. So, is this the only course that you're teaching at ND, or you've got some other things? Yeah, that I teach. Belt? I teach core French. Oh yes. Yeah, okay. I normally teach that first semester. Nice. And then I teach my outdoor program second semester. Nice. Yeah. So, what's the big plan for you? Like, I, I mean, you talk about this course and mm -hmm. and how fun it sounds. I mean, it sounds great, and I'm mm -hmm. sure the kids enjoy um, you know taking part. Mm -hmm. uh, what's What's the big plans? You talked about ice fishing, but what's you know big picture? What are we looking at? The big plan for, for the course is to keep it sustainable in this district. Great. You know, and figuring out plans of how we're going to be able to offer it for years and years to come. Yep. We have the we have the skeleton, I guess you could say, and we have everything. We've got tons of equipment, but mm -hmm. it's just keeping that, um, just just keeping it sustainable for sure. Well, we'll do our part. I mean, yeah. we, uh, I'm constantly getting uh, stories from you about mm -hmm. what you've been doing. I, I love the pictures. I love the stories and mm -hmm. we'll continue to share those because yeah. I think people, uh, people enjoy seeing that on, on social media and, yeah. and, um, I mean, why not, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you do some really fun things. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm super happy that you were able to take some time out of your busy day to mm -hmm. come down beyond the NLPS Ed Talks podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love to hear about, uh, you know, it, it was great to hear, you know, the things that you get to do and, and uh, you know, doing the things in Croatia and then, of course, living in the most beautiful place in Canada. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've, got a, you've got a pretty good life. So, yeah. I'm, again, like I said, I'm happy that you came down here. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, wish you all the best with this course and uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. Awesome. Thank you, Dale. I really appreciate everything. Take care.